Hey, so this video is to go over a white paper that I published over on my blog. It's a general white paper about a business idea, mainly in regard to stock image service providers. So to set a baseline and kind of explain what exactly is going on, I'm going to explain what a stock service provider is, just for those of you that don't know. When people publish images online, someone actually owns those images, whether it be an organization or an actual person, a photographer, an artist. And in order to use those images, you actually are supposed to pay a licensing fee. Many consumers can get away with not paying licensing fees, specifically because they're too small a portion of the market be worth going after for many of the stock service providers or the photographers or artists, etc. Businesses actually have a harder time with this because businesses often have wallets that are big enough to make them larger targets. So even though I'm not a business, I'm an individual, you'll find that on my website, all of the images are either sourced from a Creative Commons provider, such as Pexels, which is a lot of the imagery, or they're images that I actually shot myself with a camera. As someone who loves open source and Creative Commons and those types of things, you will find that my white paper that I published is actually released into the Creative Commons. It's posted on the actual blog entry, and I'm saying it again right here, it's available for Creative Commons, personal use. Uh, you can modify it, take sections out of it, source it if you'd like, or you can use it for commercial use. I did put in there a request that if you do source it for commercial use that you link back to me and actually cite that I'm the one who, who created it. Creative Commons and, and open source that requires citation is actually pretty normal. That's MIT license. Some of the other types of licenses that are out there may not require it, but it is something, you know, you can actually monetize and sell it. I do appreciate any kind of reference that you can take or, or link back to my blog. And you will find that this blog is linked specifically in the description below. I named the product Extreme Taco Stock Image Plus for a couple of reasons. Number one, tacos are awesome. If you don't like tacos, go eat one. Tell me how you feel about it after the fact. If you don't actually like it after the fact, I suggest that you seek some form of help. But tacos, in my opinion, are awesome. Number two, it's kind of a code name for a hypothetical business idea. In my general skill set, I'm really good at coming up with structures and ideas and systems and understanding how they work in the real world. When it comes to marketing messaging, I have many friends that are a lot better than I am. And really my focus is mainly numbers, it's business to business and how to make transactions work, uh, pure dollars and cents stuff. So really extreme taco stock image plus, it's kind of fun and hopefully hooky enough that people will like it and get a laugh out of it and use it for inspiration to come up with a awesome marketing name that will work for your business. So since we covered that businesses need to actually purchase stock images, we'll kind of go a little bit deeper into the business model. Most stock image providers organize things so that you actually purchase the images or you purchase an image pack or you pay a monthly subscription to be able to download a certain number of images. My competitive change to this whole system is many users, many companies, they use images for their websites. They'll publish something on their homepage and they'll have like an actual image up there and that's what they're using the stock images for. Many businesses source their photos for their website, so it's actually just loaded directly from their website. So having a downloaded image and then re-uploading it to the website might make sense for some users, but there's often caps on how many times that image can be displayed. The idea in this white paper is that we would actually host 
the images on our own content delivery network and allow the users to take the image and they wouldn't have to worry about how many maximum views they would receive. Everything would be charged on a per view basis. And this would also reduce a lot of business risk, legal risk, reduce the server complexity for our clients and really target the growing business kind of segment of the market. Specifically, the reason why we would like to target the B2B section of the market is B2B is, from what I understand, the majority of the economy in general. I think I heard years ago that it's 85% plus of the market. I could be wrong on that. I think it was something that I heard on NPR, but I couldn't find the actual source of that information. Among the services that we would provide for Extreme Taco Stock Image Plus, one of the things that we would actually cover is the ability for our users to be able to crop the images and add filters over them and make sure that they actually work for our clients' use. We went into what the competitive landscape looks like, who our general competitors would be, what, the, what kind of technology underlies the whole idea. Just a pretty solid detail. I tried to think of every single angle that you would want for a general business proposal. And it, it worked out to being about eight to 10 pages long based on the word processing document that I used. So this video isn't just to be about what this service is, but also to go into detail as far as what I think could have been added to the white paper and what I think I may have gotten wrong or I could have improved a good deal when I went through and, and came up with this whole concept. The first thing I'll cover is actually an addendum that I, I would like to put on it. And this is the use of blockchain technology, specifically the use of smart contracts. If you don't know what a smart contract is, I'll give you a quick little refresher. Blockchain technology in general is a bunch of different people keeping maintaining an actual ledger and showing who has what value and when that trans when that value was transferred from one person to another. A smart contract comes in here because smart contracts actually transfer the value after a certain set of criteria have been accomplished, just like a regular contract. You write a contract that says, if I give you this, you will give me X, Y, Z. You give that person that, and then they're contractually obligated to give you X, Y, Z. Smart contracts handle that entirely digitally and would alleviate some of the need for us to go and maintain and, and enforce any kind of disputes that take place between the creators and artists and the businesses that purchase the print images. The reason why we would use smart contracts in this case is because our main focus is on the digital distribution of the stock photography. And really for the printing and that distribution, we would like that contract to be negotiated and enforced between the actual creator and the business itself. Our businesses, our clients will need the ability to print because often people want their print materials to match their digital materials. But this offloads a, a lot of the responsibilities that we would actually have for tracking down and enforcing print rules. And we could just do this simply by making the, the print portion of it just a platform for general negotiation. We wouldn't have to worry about it too much. Of course, we would charge a small fee to cover the administration of the platform itself but it's not our core competency. It's covering some of the things that we would need to, uh, to cover some of the services to make us less prone from attack by system improvements from companies like Shutterstock, Getty, or Adobe Stock. I actually stole this idea of using blockchain technology to allow creators and businesses to negotiate directly with each other from a company called WeMark. I thought this was a great idea when I saw WeMark and what they were doing, but I didn't really see how they would make enough money to keep themselves afloat because really you need a lot of creators in the very beginning and you need a lot of businesses to jump on in order to turn a profit over the long term. We're talking about essentially a sharing economy like Uber 
but for B2B transactions. And there's just the scaling of that is going to be difficult to accomplish in a very short period of time, which is why we are looking to provide a higher level of service with our digital product in order to capture that business quickly. Ultimately, I think the blockchain functionality here of using our main pay-as-you-go, pay-as-you-load model for all of the digital loads, we can actually track that and make sure that we are paying our artists and getting paid based on the actual usage of the stock photos. Uh, and then using blockchain to kind of cover and making sure that we're less vulnerable to competitors will really solidify our position in the market. The second thing, and this is kind of a critique, and this is something that I think I got wrong, in the white paper, I said that we would use our own processing to allow the users to send us coordinates and resolutions, and we would actually process what size images that they need and store those on our content delivery network and deliver it as they need. I think that this actually has quite a bit of a scaling issue because processing power is extremely expensive, and most users, and especially in a working environment, have very powerful computers that can definitely handle cropping jobs. So instead of using our own servers, we would use their web browsers capability to leverage a tool such as Croppy, which is another open source tool, to actually clip the image down to size, give us the appropriate resolution. Of course, we would capture the information regarding what resolutions and what coordinates they're using. That's kind of a key part of the analytics part of the white paper but we would use their processing, which is relatively expensive, to handle some of the jobs for us. Now that part right there of using JavaScript on our users' computers to help lower our costs, there are other ways that we could lower costs as well. One of the things that I put in the white paper that would definitely be a future enhancement is that we would use the coordinates to be able to reproduce the images and put it back through our processing. Chances are it's a lot less expensive to take the image off of the CDN, which is content delivery networks are extremely expensive because they're plugged essentially right into the internet backbone. So it's premium real estate from a digital perspective. But if a user isn't using the image, you could throw it off into cold storage for very, very little money there are less expensive ways of storing the data than just storing the metadata. Both of these ideas are really cost-saving measures and they're, they're kind of mistakes that I made over the course of writing the white paper. Storing the information or the pictures on a hard drive is far less expensive. That's probably something that you would get the business up and running and then realize, oh, there's a much cheaper way of handling this issue than to store only the picture met metadata and recreate the images on an as-needed basis. The cropping of the images would be something that needed to be modified in the specifications before you actually started developing the product. And uh, so that's more of a glaring error. It's also one that I found when I was really deep in the copy editing process. So I wanted to make sure to get the white paper published and then go back and retroactively kind of list any kind of critiques that I found with it instead of just throwing it out in the wild. And it gave me the opportunity to make this video. So I'm actually happy to a certain degree that I made that, that specific mistake uh, just to kind of draw more attention to the white paper in general and put up video content, which is generally more popular than written content. Aside from these couple of modifications, um, the minor error, the relatively major error, and the addition that I add here, I, I do think that this is a good business idea. I think it could be really successful. The reason why I'm not pursuing it is it's not really something that I'm passionate about and really any kind of business, is, business idea that I'd like to pursue would, would be something that I'm a little bit more interested in especially to the point where it's probably going to cost a decent amount of money to get something like this off of the ground. And finding someone, finding an angel investor to come in and give you five to $20 million to go up against the big stock image service providers 
is probably pretty difficult. As already noted in this video, WeMark was a good idea. They looked like they spent a good amount of money on their website and they went under relatively quickly. So it is a risky market segment to go into. When you fall on hard times, you really need to have that extra drive to get yourself over the hump. With that said, I do think it's a good business idea. I think there is actually a market need for this. Really working in the marketing industry for a couple of years, working at my second agency, many clients I think would be interested in something that could decrease the complexity of their server configuration and make their lives a little bit easier and help protect them legally. So I'd like to thank you for stopping by and having a look at this video. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you like the idea. And if you're curious about it, you can go over to my blog and have a read. I will have a link to that posted down in the description below. Thank you very much. Have a great one.